Shab five sir with all your due permission, we are live. Shall we begin? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, sir. Good evening, everyone. This is Batul from IJCP, and I would like to welcome all the viewers who have joined our platform for the better exchange of knowledge that is going to be shared uh, by our eminent speaker for today's session. Well, uh, sir needs no introduction, but it's our great honor and pleasure to introduce him. He is a very renowned cardiologist, and he is none other than the very renowned Professor Dr. Chandrabhan Meena, sir. Sir is MBBS, MD, DM in Cardiology, Senior Professor Cardiology at SNS Medical College, Jaipur. With Sir's help and with Sir's wonderful insights and his experience, we are going to talk about the topic for today's session, which is fine renown in patients with diabetes and CKD. To know more about this topic, let's have a brief outlook about what the topic says. Understand the intricate relationship between diabetes and CKD, the growing prevalence of this comorbidity and associated challenges. We'll be having a very insightful webcast that explores the groundbreaking rule of fine renown in the treatment of patients with both diabetes and chronic kidney disease. So now without any further delay, I would like to welcome Sir at our forum and would like to hand over the session to him for his precious talk to begin. So over to you. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks to IGP for giving me this opportunity to discuss uh, before the World Heart Day on the important topic of uh, fine renown in patients with CKD and diabetes. Uh, we all know that India is facing a uh, double jeopardy of diabetes and hypertension, and apart from that, uh, this heart disease in young patients. And post COVID, it has become one, uh, one of the important uh, leading causes of morbidity and mortality, especially in young patients. And as we all know that India is becoming the capital of the diabetes, and we're going to see more number of the patients of diabetes and CKD, which are important comorbidities associated in patients who have cardiovascular disease. And there is complex interplay, and this leads to increase mortality and morbidity in the population. So we have various established mode of treatment as far as the diabetes and heart disease is concerned. But recently, there have been some new insight as far as the use of uh, elder serum receptor antagonist management in the patients with CKD and diabetes and those who have heart failure. So what is the available data as far as the phenylalanine in patients with CKD and diabetes? I'll be discussing briefly to, in today's uh, discussion. So outline of the top will be the, what is the role of albuminuria and e uh, EGFR in patients who have uh, Cardiovascular disease assess this condition for the role as the position is concerned. What is the role of aldosterone pathological effect and what is the effect of finerone as aldosterone receptor antagonist? Then there are three important landmark trials which have established the role of phenylalanine in, in this population, which includes the Fidelo DKD, Pegaro DKD, and Fidelity trials. So I'll be discussing briefly the important uh, patient population inclusion criteria and their outcome and the safety issues of these trials. Then finally, what is the interaction of the phenylalanine with other drugs, especially ICL2 inhibitor? Because these are the important molecules which have established as a class one uh, recommendation for the patient with heart failure, as well as in patients with diabetes. And finally, summarizing what is the today discussion. So this is one of the recent uh, published paper from the Egypt, which has shown that hypertension and diabetes are the two important, almost 50, more than 50% of the population patient they, who have CKD. Diabetes and hypertension are the two important underlying risk factors of comorbidity in this patient. All those patients who develop and stain disease, most of them, they have either diabetes or hypertension as underlying risk factor. And if you look at the management of these population as for the school, old school of thought, most of these patients of the diabetic are treated with metformin and lifestyle management, which include diet and exercise. And uh, recent development led to use of ACE inhibitor in the ARB, Till the time it was tolerated because of the either the uh, decreasing GFR or the, most of them they had significant renewal and women in CKD and point out point. But there has been recent change with the new introduction of L2 inhibitors in all sub population, in all uh, subset of population, especially patients had a uh, decreased GFR, diabetes, heart disease. And recently, FD proved final on the management of this subset of population. To decrease the proclamation. So, first we have to look at association of area and uh, decrease in the renal function measured in the 
from EGFR. So if you look at the decreasing the EGFR from normal increase in the cardiovascular mortality, so there is significant increase in the cardiovascular mortality and it is significantly positively uh, correlated with the decrease in the GFR. Similarly, if you look at the all-cause mortality and uh, uh, the protein urea, again, there is in significant increase in the albumin urea in creating cardiovascular mortality. Both of them, they are uh, correlated with the increased cardiovascular mortality. So decreasing cardiovascular data in the form of decreasing in GFR and increased protein urea associated uh, increased cardiovascular mortality. So the important factor or marker as far as the assessment of cardiovascular risk in these patient population. Uh, attention to both these parameters when we are treating or dealing with the patient with uh, CKD and diabetes and underlying heart disease. Uh, this is the table we showed how the how the patients are assessed and what is the frequency of uh, their assessment as far as the uh, the albumin albuminuria is concerned and the, the uh, GFR is concerned. I'll not go into the detail. If the patient had normal GFR, I think we require less frequent monitoring. But if they have a decrease in the GFR, is, is stage four or five, we need quite frequent monitoring. And if you have the severe increase in the proteinuria that is more than 300 milligram per deciliter, then they require frequent uh, monitoring of the renal function as well as the proteinuria. And uh, uh, apart from the all established treatment, Aldosterone has been the main uh, uh, pivotal uh, uh, drug or the molecule in the development of pathogenesis in patients with CKD as well as in patients with heart failure because it leads to vascular damage, which leads to cell fibrosis, hypertension, and ultimately development of CKD. On the other hand, there is increased cardiac fibrosis, sodium, and uh, the water retention, which leads to development of congestion and increased sym symptoms of heart failure. And finally, uh, the leading to the uh, cardiovascular mortality and other mortality. So, aldosterone has an important role as far as the uh, pathogenetic mechanism in patients with CKD and heart failure is concerned. And it, is, it has been one of the main stay in the management of patients with heart failure. If you look at the development of the aldosterone in the uh, use of uh, minor, mineral receptor antibodies in patients with heart failure, the, in the cardiovascular disease, 1938, it was established that uh, deoxycorticoacetone is uh, associated with sodium retaining and the potassium uh, retaining properties. And that's why it, uh, the identification of the mineral receptor in the uh, cardiovascular or the renal disease uh, in development was concerned. In 1943, it was, uh, it was associated that they are associ associated with the uh, blood vessel and increase in the patient with inflammation and associated with heart failure. In uh, 1960, FDA approved spironolactone in the management of heart failure as a diuretic which was the step they established the role of diuresis of this electron. And these are two important landmark trials, which include the RELS and FSS, which uh, showed significant decrease in the cardiovascular mortality, the use of spironolactone and aplanolone in patients with heart failure. Uh, in, later on, it was uh, tried in patients with CKD also, and it has shown that there is associated with decrease in the mortality and decline in GFR in, with the use of mineral called Z especially uh, in their style, it was shown that there is decrease in the cardiovascular fibrosis and this leads to decrease in the mortality. And uh, recently, the systematic review and meta-analysis has shown that mineralocorticoid receptors used uh, in patients with uh, loop diuretic or renin angiotensin system inhibitors, there is significant improvement in the mortality and morbidity. And it can be combined, used with all these molecules. So phenylalanine is the new drug, which is a selective non-steroidal uh, the uh, receptor and mineral culture receptor antagonist. And if you look at the different parameters comparing the spinalactone, epinephrine, and phenylalanine, they have significant difference as far as the mineral culture receptor activity, glucocorticoid receptor activity, androgen and progesterone receptor activity. That's why it is important compared to the spinalactone. The phenylalanine is selective and non-steroidal. Uh, mineral cortical receptor antagonist compared to the spinalactone, which is non-selective uh, receptor antagonist. If you compare the physiological effect, phenylalanine has uh, potent and selective mineral cortical receptor binding, while spinalactone has non-selective binding. And if you look at the effect on the potassium metabolism, phenylalanine has the minimal effect on the as far as the potassium metabolism concerned while spironolactone has significant increase in the potassium value. And this is what the main side effect of the spironolactone is concerned. And thereby the, the role of phenylalanine has come into the picture in management of CKD and heart failure 
uh, with the use of control of blood pressure as well as of control of symptoms of heart failure. So these are the three important landmark trials, which are the Fidelo DKD, uh, Figaro DKD and Fidelity, and uh, which have assessed the role of phenylalanine in this population associated with comorbidities and diabetes and CKD. And uh, I'll be discussing what are the patient population, what are the endpoints, and what are the safety, and what are the result of the trials. So two of these trials had been published in NEGM. So these are the landmark trials papers, and other was uh, other was presented at the late breaking trial in patient in ESC uh, 2022. So this is the first trial that is uh, uh, published in uh, 2020 in uh, NEGM, that is Fidelo DKD. It is a double-blind placebo-controlled trial in patients with diabetes. The duration of the trial was around two, and, two years and six months. Patients were on death blockade, and they were divided into two groups. One was the patient with EGFR of 25 to 75, or those who had ESR less than 60, with the urinary albumin ratio of uh, around 300 to 5,000, or uh, less than 300. So there are two subsets of the population which had different the uh, the different uh, stage of renal dysfunction and this Figaro DKD trial again was double blind placebo controlled trial the long duration of around three or four months and the patients were on death blockades and they again had the same two subset of the population uh, in this paper compared if you look at the uh, Figaro and Fidelity there was overlap of the patient they uh, they were all class class A1 A2 A3 depending on the proteinuria as well as the depending on the uh, stage of renal dysfunction, so there was significant overlap of the population. So they, we can combine both these trials and effect of drugs in different subtypes of the population. And if you look at the primary composite end count of these two trials, they were significantly different. So what are the primary endpoint in patients with federal DKD includes time to onset of kidney failure, sustained decrease that is more than 40% decrease in the EGFR from the baseline or renal death. And the key secondary endpoints were the same as which are seen in the Figaro. So in primary endpoint in the Figaro DKD trials for the time to CV death, non-fatal myocardial infarction, non-fatal stroke or hospital, heart failure hospitalization, and time to hospital hospitalization. So the primary endpoint of the Figaro DKD was the secondary endpoint in the Figaro DKD trial and vice versa. So that we can have effect on all the major outcomes uh, in both the trials. While in Figaro DKD, uh, in Fidelity trial, the composite outcome, of the primary outcome for the CV composite outcome which included the cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, stroke, or hospitalization. And the secondary outcomes were the kidney composite outcomes, which was the onset of kidney failure, sustained decrease, that is more than 57% decrease in the EGFR from the baseline, or renal death. So we have different subset of population with different endpoints and uh, uh, different class of drugs. So what is the effect on this subset of population? We can have a fair idea about comparison of digital data. And if so, this slide again showed the, the for primary and secondary reward, but apart from that, there were other secondary endpoints which included all cause mortality, all cause hospitalization, change in the urinary albumin creation ratio, and composite onset of kidney failure, renal death. And there were some exploratory endpoints also which were studied. That is the slope of the decline in the GFR, onset of new atrial fibrillation, and new onset heart failure. These are the trials which, have, which will basically lead pathway for the further trials as for the use of neuronal in the subset of the population so that it can be used as a preventive strategy for the development of new onset of heart failure. Coming to the result of these trials in the Fidelo DKD trials, if you look at there is 18% uh, decrease in the primary composite points, which include the kidney failure, sustained decrease in the GFR and death from the renal, renal failure. And the 14% decrease in the secondary endpoint, which includes the cardiovascular death, uh, non fatal myocardial infarction, and hospitalization because of the heart failure. So, almost 14 to 18% decrease in the primary and secondary endpoint. And in Figaro DKD trial, if you look at again the hazard ratio 0.87 and 0.87, so almost 13% decrease in cardiovascular death, non fatal MI, and heart failure hospitalization, and secondary endpoint also decrease. So, we have all uh, primary and secondary uh, endpoint uh, improvement in both the trials. Uh, if you look at the Figaro and Fidelo DKD trial. So all parameters were in, uh, benefited uh, with the phenylalanine in the subset of population. If you look at the, uh, the effect of the uh, phenylalanine in fidelity pooled analysis, again, the significant reduction in the endpoint of cardiovascular death, heart failure hospitalization, so almost 22% uh, reduction in the heart failure hospitalization, 14% reduction in the CV endpoint, 
23% reduction in the composite kidney endpoints and 20% uh, decrease in the use of dialysis in the patient with the use of phenarone in the subset of population. If you look at the safety analysis, again, in Fidelo DKD trial, there was a slight increased incidence of hyperkalemia with the use of phenarinone, that is 2.3% versus 0.9% in placebo group, while in Fidelo DKD, it was not significant different. This was the main concern that it can lead to increase hyperkalemia. But uh, if you look at the long-term pool analysis, it's a significant hyperkalemia was seen as compared to the uh, spinal electron in this patient with the use of phenarinone. If we look at the confounding effect, the presence of heart failure in patients uh, with the use of phenarinone uh, on the effect of the cardiovascular hospitalization, mortality, and all called death. Again, it was not affected with the presence or absence of heart failure. So, patient who had underlying heart failure or patient who did not have uh, heart failure had benefit uh, of the same extent with the use of phenarinone in this population. And similarly, if you look at the effect of phenarinone on the composite of uh, CV outcome, which uh, uh, include the cardiovascular composite outcome, CV death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, or first heart failure hospitalization. Again, there is significant benefit uh, with the use of phenarinone, despite uh, with the presence of heart failure or there is no heart failure underlying this patient. So all patient population benefited with the use of phenarinone uh, with the cardiovascular outcomes. Again, if you look at the secondary analysis of the uh, use of phenarinone in patients with phenarinone trial, the progression of the renal disease was significantly improved with the uh, use of phenarinone. Uh, that it shows there's uh, the phenarinone lowered the first heart failure hospitalization and especially uh, the significant uh, reduction. If you look at the hazard ratio, it's for 0.7, almost 13% reduction in the heart failure hospitalization. And if you look at CKD progression, again, there is a uh, significant reduction, almost 20% reduction uh, with the use of phenarinone in this population. The, Safety analysis has shown that all the treatment associated adverse events were similar in all subset of population, except the hyperkalemia, where if the, you can look at the hyperkalemia leading to treatment discrimination was not different between the two subset population. So patient with heart failure or without heart failure, it is significant. Though there was significant, there slightly increased incidence of hyperkalemia, but treatment discrimination was the not important parameter. So that all of the patient Rather, most of the patient could continue with the use of an error on, uh, uh, without any significant hyperkalemia and as uh, the side effect. So it is very safe and it is very effective. And again, if you look at the uh, patients with few hyperkalemia related event, hyperkalemia is 0.6 in patients with in placebo and 1.7, which led to discontinuation, which is not aesthetically significant. It can be safely given in this patient population, those have uh, end stage renal heart disease, even including uh, stage three and stage four heart disease. Another new concept or the new important question has arrived whether in the patient with the use of SGLT2 inhibitor, whether phenarinone can be used in this patient because SGLT2 inhibitors have not become class one uh, agent as far as the patient with heart failure is concerned, heart failure with uh, reduced digestion fraction, where it can be used as a adjunctive molecule. And again, if you see the patient who had SGLT2 inhibitor as baseline or who did not have SGLT2 in the baseline, they had no significant difference. Other patients who had SGLT2 fared better compared to those who did not have SGLT2 inhibitor. And similarly, the other molecules that are GLP1 receptor and antagonists, again, there is no significant interaction. And these patients also benefited the use of phenarinone. So these patients' population can also be prescribed with phenarinone, those who have underlying uh, the CV, uh, the CVD, CKD, and they have increased comorbidities. The other the trial, uh, again, has compared the effect of uh, other drugs, that is canaglophagin, apart from the SGA2 inhibitors, and they have compared the effect of canaglophagin in patients with the same uh, including criteria, which has been included in the federal DKD trial. And they have showed this, if you apply these criteria, there is put, uh, almost 26% uh, reduction in the composite cardinal outcome and almost 31% uh, reduction in the kidney-specific outcome in the patients with the uh, use of phenarinone compared to the patients who use canaglophagin in turn. So all those patients who did not receive canaglophagin, again, they have significant benefit. And if you add this, you have combined benefit of using this molecule with canaglophagin. So again, say showing safety of the phenarinone uh, with the use of SGT2 inhibitors. In summary, uh, we have seen that patients who had CKD, those who have heart disease, or those who have heart failure, they have increased mortality, especially patients with and stage CKD and those who have heart failure, they have been mortality and risk of mortality and morbidity. 
and they are basically uh, uh, they are because bad return most of the patient have frequent hospital heart failure hospitalization and increased cardiac resources because of the frequent dialysis or uh, frequent admission due to heart failure these patient can be significantly benefited with the use of phenidron maybe in combination with our drugs especially as gr2 inhibitors the other important uh, 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 the parameter of the outcome of the uh, these trials has shown that abnormal uretin adenine creatinine is the most important and this should be measured in most of the patient when you are following this patient and egfr more than 60 is considered as the ckd because these patient have significant uretinuria and they should be followed uh, more closely and they should have maximum tolerated drugs which can be used to decrease the, G, the decline in the gfr and the development of new onset heart failure phenidron has effectively reduced cardiovascular mortality and kidney failure outcome in these patients in all the these trials and uh, it can be combined with the other stabilizers like you know, ras inhibitors agent to inhibitors and other drugs we don't have any sufficient data as far as the use of rni in this subset population concern in patients with heart failure with uh, reduced extraction but i think i'm sure about in future we'll have some data which can show a light on this aspect also the questions remain so that should phenidron be used in combination as gl2 inhibitor we have some data available uh, in the in this trial in the form of uh, credence trial and this but we don't have any head to head comparison long term trials so this has to be uh, again uh, studied in the long term uh, passive control trials and the another question is should phenidron be used as a novel uh, oral potassium binder because there is slightly increase incidence of hyperkalemia so whether it should be used with the other potassium binders that also it has to be has to be studied in future studies so i think i will sum, uh, sum up and i'll end up here and we have some data especially these three landmark trials which have established the role of phenidron in patient with ckd and uh, those who have associated diabetes and uh, heart disease which has showed significant improvement all ckd outcome heart failure uh, outcome and cardiovascular mortality including the cv non fatal mi stroke and heart failure hospitalization thank you very much and uh, i think we can have some discussion about it. thank you so much sir thank you uh, for your wonderful insights upon the topic that you have shared your summary your thoughts upon the thank topic you. thank you so much for that uh, yeah. we have received few questions from the participants with all your due permission i would like to put across those questions to you yeah sure uh, the first question is how the plasma levels are associated with increased risk of diabetes plasma levels of uh, what i repeat the question the question is how yeah. the plasma levels are associated with increased risk of diabetes i don't think that there is significant but i think they must be asking about the plasma levels of phenylalanine all right sir i will move to the next question and the next question is what is the association of urinary acidification function with the progression of diabetic kidney disease in patients with type 2 diabetes uh i think this question may be uh, uh answered by the nephrologist betterly but you have seen the with the change in, with the urinary acidification there is significant change in the uh, renal homeostasis and that leads to decline the egfr that's why uh, the patient who had initially they were given uh, metformin only some of the patient they had significant uh, metabolic acidosis and they had acute uh, acute onset kidney disease in this patient so uh, i think that that may be one of the reasons which leads to development of ckd in these patients All right. Thank you so much, sir, for answering that question. Uh, we will take up the next question that we have received. A viewer of ours wants to know your advice, sir, on how do we know when to stop metformin in CKD patients with diabetes? Uh, one, as I said, the patient has significant metabolic acidosis. We should stop. And nowadays, I think most of the, the there are the uh, the, uh, the American Diabetic Association also they also seen. if you have significant uh, uh, decline in the egfr or do you have the de development of uh, uh, heart failure frequent heart failure hospitalization i think we should uh, either decrease the dose of metformin or we should uh, uh, stop metformin and we can use the other other drugs in your molecule especially sglt2 inhibitors which are 
uh, safe in patient with uh, even end-stage CKDs till the GFR is more than uh, 20, I think. Thank you so much, sir, for answering that question. We will take up the next question and the last question for today's session. And the question is, what are the new treatment opportunities for CKD in type 2 diabetic patients, according to you, sir? Uh, there are so many times, like we see in the patient with CKD and diabetes, SGLT2 inhibitors we already discussed. They should, they should be given. Pineron we have discussed today. And uh, I think we'll be having some new molecules which are being studied, especially patients, uh, those with diabetes and heart failure, like we have uh, uh, gelti vacuumab, which has been used in patients with uh, heart failure, even pressure rejection fraction, and CKD, which is basically an anti-inflammatory. So most of many of the new anti-inflammatory drugs uh, molecules are being used because CKD is, uh, is a pro-inflammatory state. And uh, this affects both the development or the progression of the CKD with the decline in GFR and development of heart failure. So these molecules may be used as far as the uh, decrease in the CK, decline in the GFR and the development of heart failure in patients with CKD. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for answering that question. Uh, we are receiving another question from one of our viewers. If you permit, sir, then we will take that question up. Yeah, sure. We can. Yeah. So this second. question is from another viewer. The uh, viewer wants to know, like, suppose if the creatinine level uh, is nine or is seven, then is dialysis applicable or any advice for that? Yeah, I think so. I'm not a, not a nephrologist, but what of the most of the time the creatinine uh, is not the important. It is the basically the electrolyte, electrolyte imbalance and urine and the urinary output, and the, that is more important. The patient's whole situation whether they require dialysis or the patient is congested, potassium is going high, and if the urine output is not adequate, I think in that condition patient will require dialysis. Uh, it depends on the case case to basis, but some of the patients may require dialysis even if the creatinine so, uh, is more than six. So that is all variable on the different patients. It's not the absolute creatinine value it should be uh, the main uh, concern as far as the dialysis is concerned. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for answering that question. That was the last question for today's session. And at the outset, I would like to thank all the viewers for their ardent participation that they have shown by being here with us at our platform throughout the session. So thank you so yeah. much. Uh, with this and with all your last comments, sir, we can conclude the session here for today. Until next time. Yeah, thank you very much. And thanks for giving me the opportunity. And I hope I am able to do some justice to the talk and the time which has been given. And thanks again. And if you have opportunity, I think we can have a more session on other important pertinent uh, topics. I think. Thank you very much. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. With this, okay. we are uh, concluding for today and uh, hope to see everyone next time at our platform with some interesting topic. So thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.